Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's take on the Bob's Burgers movie, which uh, I just recently watched. It's on HBO Max, so if you got that, go to town. And uh, we're going to get into it. First, I'll do the non-spoiler review and then the spoiler review. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Thanks for buying my books. Of course, The Pineys. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Now, I love Bob's Burgers. Been watching it since the very first episode. Um, I've missed maybe the last two seasons, we'll say. Uh, when I basically bowed out of cable television. Uh, it's a it's a pretty great show, and uh, I was very psyched to watch this. So understand, I'm a huge Bob's Burgers fan. But, and this is the non-spoiler review, the movie is underwhelming. You know, someone, one of the um, reviewers wrote, it's like five episodes of Bob's Burgers stitched together uh, with one plot. And it kind of is. It kind of is. I, it's paced well. Um, it's not bad. I don't think it's awful. But it is like one, one big episode, and not a partic not one of their best. All the themes and all the bits they've done on the show, and they've done it better. They've done it way better on the show. The only thing new here is the animation and the lighting. You can see the light on the phone behind Gene. Yeah, the animation's nicer. Um, but so what? So what? I like the animation from the show. You know, this kind of stuff, yeah, it looks better. It costs more money. But I, I'm not like, oh, thank God, better animation on Bob's Burgers. That's not what the show's about. It's not a show about animation. It's not, it's not uh, anime. You know, it's a show about a family, it's about comedy, and I'll say this, it feels cheap as F. I think they cheaped out on this movie, because the guest stars are few and far between. Now, Aziz has a few lines as his character. Um, regular size Rudy is in it, briefly, very briefly, but it mostly focuses on the main characters, um, you know, Bob and Linda, the kids, Teddy, uh, Fish Odor, and his brother, who's voiced by Zach Galifianakis. And then, uh, you know, Zach Galifianakis' girlfriend has a brief moment. And then there's a new character, which you immediately, well, I won't go into it, but until the spoiler, but. Part of the problem is the show has kind of gone woke in a in a weird way. I think they got, I believe they got they canceled Jimmy Pesto, the voice of Jimmy Pesto, and they haven't recast him. So Jimmy Pesto's in it. You see him, but he doesn't have any lines. The twins, his twins, who are voiced by Sarah Silverman, they're in it too. They don't have any lines. Come sit here until I'm finished. Uh, and as much as I'm I, I don't really like Sarah Silverman. I do like the twins. I do like her voice in the twins. They're actually kind of funny because they're kind of just dummies. And, uh, so that was weird. Like you couldn't even get Sarah Silverman to do the twins. You couldn't even use old lines from the show, which I'm sure you've got on computer somewhere. I mean, and just pay her like minimum. So the show, so not only does the movie feel empty, it, it just doesn't rise to the level of the show. It, it, it just really doesn't. Now, it's not awful. Oh, and uh, Linda's sister isn't in it. You know, there's a credit sequence at the end, and this isn't giving anything away, where you see a bunch of the characters from the show who weren't in the movie. And they include Bob's sister, who's the biggest glaring, you know, they, they left out Bob's sister. Bob's sister should have made an appearance. Also, Gene's girlfriend and a couple of others. And you're like, I'm watching the credits going, yeah, what happened to these guys? Why aren't these characters in it? 
There's also three musical numbers, and again, they're underwhelming. They're not good. Ricky's in it, the Carney, and they do explore new areas of town, um, which is good. They do explore some of the lore with the kids, particularly Louise, which is good. They kind of touch upon Tina a bit, who I expect I expected to be more Tina. There was some Tina, but not a lot. They kind of, I guess, split the difference, and it, it focused more on Louise than it did the other two. But um, yeah, I was I was shocked. It's not great. It's okay. Like, you know, as a as a rating, as a Bob's Burger fan, I would rate this as a, a moderately okay episode. If you cut out, if you cut it down to a half hour or an hour, it would be great. It would be awesome. But it, I guess it's about ninety minutes. Uh, but it just feels like, man, what happened to all the characters? What happened to everybody? Uh, the, the, the movie plot doesn't do itself any favors. Because of the plot of the movie, it kind of... It's not a great plot. And they've done it before on this show. It's not a big plot. Like, you know, the Simpsons movie had a giant plot with Homer and Marge abandoning Springfield because of the giant dome over, the, over Springfield and everybody trapped and everybody, you know, sort of depended upon them and then... Homer having a revelation and having to go back and granted those characters have been through a million different things but at least felt big this did not feel big now they couldn't go in that direction with Bob's Burgers it's way more grounded in reality but you know it oh and they had uh, Little Jimmy of course was in it uh, and and this seemed like a step backwards, too, because they've done so many episodes with Tina and Little Jimmy. Uh, it seemed like in the show, to some extent, Tina was sort of over him. But, you know, it's, it's sort of static. Here they are dancing in one of the musical numbers. Gene's Fantasy. Here's Bob talking to a burger. Classic. But, um, yeah, it just... Well, i got to get into the specifics, so... Um, but it's not awful. I mean, to watch it for free, it was fine. I haven't seen Bob's Burgers in a while, so it was good to see the characters again. But man, it's just like, oh great, lots of animation and hardly any guest stars. There's a ton of guest stars, too. I expected guest stars out the wazoo in this thing, because that's part of the show. Like, unlike The Simpsons, yeah, The Simpsons have guest stars, but the show was never really dependent upon them. They would show up. Bob's is less dependent on co-stars but they have good roles it would have been great to see a few of them so very un underwhelming overall not awful but underwhelming definitely back as we say would have been a rental I'm glad I didn't pay to see this movie I would have been pissed had I had I paid to see a movie I think they really shortchanged the fans here um but for, you know, something I could watch for free on HBO, it was fine. It was fine. All right. Now that concludes the non-spoiler review. Here's the spoiler review. Uh, the plot is um, a sinkhole opens up in front of a restaurant and uh, at the worst possible time because Bob and Linda have a payment due on the restaurant. And if they don't pay it, um, they'll take away all their... Um, restaurant equipment and they also have the rent due and they can't pay both the sinkhole blocks the way nobody can get inside the restaurant let's see if I can find it here no one can get inside the restaurant at all because of the sinkhole and um, so they have to come through the alley so they're not getting any business and they only have a week to raise the money at the same time Louise goes down into the hole and discovers a body turns out to be uh, one of the carnies who was killed and his body somehow ended up in the sinkhole in front of the restaurant and um, so in the second act you know uh, and Louise the motivation for Louise to go down there is to show how how
how uh, brave she is and that she's not a baby and somebody makes fun of her hat. That, that seemed a little out of character for Louise to be that weak and sensitive about the hat because I wanted to see a Louise unfettered by the TV show and, and just like running amok. I wanted to see Louise go crazy. Because Louise is a funny character, and, you know, she has so many great lines. I smell death on you. I mean, she's a fun character. I wanted to see Louise really mix it up. You know, so when she gets uh, called out by some girls on the playground, I wanted to see Louise, like, uh, create some elaborate revenge. Um, but again, there's a bunch of other characters you just don't even see. I mean, you barely see regular size Rudy and... Aziz Ansari's character, I forget his name, uh, they just make a brief appearance. They have a couple of lines. And that's it. And then later, they're in the movie, but they don't have any lines. Jimmy Pesto, of course, has no lines because I think he's been canceled. I mean, if you're going to cancel the guy, bring him back. Bring bring back a sound alike. I think you ought to... I think you should have never canceled him, quite frankly, but uh, the show's kind of gone woke. So that really hurt it. It would have been a great... Uh, they already did this plot, by the way. Uh... Basically, I mean, they did a plot in the show where they've done it a million times where Bob and Linda are tight for money. Uh, but they've also did a plot where there was a um, mechanical shark. Uh, and at the end of the episode, it ends up um, smashing through the floor of the restaurant. Because it's like this automatic thing they can't shut off. It ends up in a hole and then... Ends up like smashing through in the Florida restaurant somehow. I forget exactly what happens. The thing with Louise's hat, they've done a bunch of times, and in fact, it kind of got resolved. And what she did to the kid who stole her hat was way worse, way worse than what she goes through here. It, it, it was a little too, it was way too soft for Louise. I wanted to see Louise really do something bad, not like really bad but I wanted to see her concoct a a big revenge on the girl who called her out you know instead they just kind of embarrass her this felt very much like it could have been like a you know again an episode of a TV show most of it focuses on the mystery which should have been the focus of the show like what was going on at the school with Louise wasn't working for me I like I like it better in the show when Louise is just crazy and unstoppable, uh, as she often is in the show. I love the episode where she runs away from home and she's already got a uh, a, a, a bug out bag hidden in the park, but she packed it when she was like six and it's it's got a phone in it, but it's a candy phone. Um, so there are all these great things in the show. It's just really missing from the movie. It's really missing. I mean, they throw in. It's almost perfunctory at this point. They throw in Gene's band, but it's it's just sort of there. But they've done shows with Gene's band and him doing songs that are really great. The songs in the show were just lame. They did a the probably the best one out of the three, and there were only three. Was they they reveal Carney Town where the Carneys live, which was okay. And that they gamble playing the duck game. That was kind of fun. And then they have a song. It was all right. But, you know, the songs, they don't really... I mean, I'm not a musical guy, so the songs got to be, like, on point. They were okay. They were Bob's Burgers type songs. I mean, I tolerated them for the show, but the show has done it better. This was... I mean, the ratings on this movie were very high. But... Not as high as the actual show. It was about 10 points lower on Rotten Tomatoes. You know, I want to like this show. And again, I didn't hate the movie. I enjoyed watching it. But it was mostly about fish odor. And they kind of set up a mystery where it looks like, you know, it looks like Felix, that's his name, fish odor's uh, brother, Zach Galifianakis, has done something he already did on the show, which was attempt to kill his brother to get the park. They already did that plot. And they even bring back his girlfriend, which pushed that in the two-parter episode in Bob's Burgers. So they bring that back all again, and kudos for them for, you know, keeping the continuity, but it doesn't really work. 
It doesn't really work. You're treading old ground. It wasn't a revelation. You added a new character. I think he's new. I don't remember him from the show. He might have been added later. Uh, the the Fish Odor brother, Fish Odor's uh, um, lawyer, Grover, uh, another cousin. He might have been on the show. I don't remember. So he's the one who committed the murder and hid the body, and then they explain how it all ends up in there. But that like eats up a ton of time, and it's not funny. I mean, it explains things, but it's not funny. I think this movie got way too caught up in the continuity of Bob's Burgers. And, you know, no laughs. Hardly any laughs. I mean, it was it was mildly funny, amusing, but there's so many characters I wanted to see. I wanted to see Gene's annoying ex-girlfriend. I wanted to see... I definitely wanted to see Jimmy Pesto. Jimmy Pesto is a fun character. He needles Bob. I don't care about what happened with his with the voice actor, get another guy to do it, or, you know, kill off the character or something. But you can't get rid of him because Jimmy Pesto Jr. is Tina's crush and the show should be static. So recast the guy or bring him back and just forgive him for whatever the hell he said, I forget. I don't think it was that bad. I don't even remember, though. Um, you know, Louise, again, there was an episode where the skateboarder takes her hat and there was a whole thing and Louise Louise gets that kid she really gets him way worse than you know she barely makes an effort in this and it needed to be it needed to up the ante if you're going to do a movie up the ante you know um, Bob and Linda escaping the carnies was fun and the, there was a car chase that was fun um, but ultimately and, and even the, the climactic scene where they're trapped in the hole is kind of fun. But, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't as funny, you know. Teddy was fine. But, like, even Teddy wasn't as weird as he is on the show. On the show, he does way better. He does way crazier stuff. You know, he's, he's a great character, too. You could have had an episode. Uh, some of the episodes exploring Teddy's character are fun. Uh, you know, they've done chef competitions and all that kind of stuff with Bob. They're fun. Uh, you know, if I had to rate this show and line it up with all the episodes, I'd put this pretty far down the bottom. It was okay. You know, the Halloween stuff's great. I mean, like, they've got so many classic episodes of the show. You just wonder, like, you know, did they just skim the top of the series and say, okay, we'll do... Something that's kind of sort of Bob's Burgery, but, you know, we want it for a general audience. I mean, now you're going to go for a general audience? Woke Hollywood, now you're going for a general audience? I mean, it was an hour 41. Hour 41. Yeah, I needed more. Needed more. No after credit stuff. You know, I wanted to see more side characters. Really needed them. Really missing them. So many classic side characters. Or just have them appear in the background of stuff. I didn't see too many. Mickey's okay. I like Mickey, but he's not a great character to keep bringing back again and again and again. Um, you know, unless, unless he's going to be part of more of it. You know, Fish Odor and Felix are fine, but uh, Zach Galifianakis felt very unnecessary. It was like, oh, we're going to put this red herring in so you don't know who killed who killed the guy. But that almost doesn't matter. This is supposed to be a comedy. Why even have Felix in it? For the star power of Zach Galifianakis? I guess, but you had plenty of other, you know, you had uh, Cyril from Archer did a voice. Um, and of course, you know, John Benjamin's great, but he doesn't really get to do much except at the very end. It just, it needed something more. It needed a much bigger plot, you know. Um, uh, even Tina's stuff just felt very perfunctory, you know. Oh, this is Tina's thing, you know. And they mentioned stuff from the show, but it wasn't like, like I wanted to see it, like what the South Park guys do. Like the South Park video game, if you've ever played it, has a mention of every single episode in the game. It's fantastic because of all the detail. Now, that's a game, but they've done it in their 
uh, little movies too. And they managed to just jam pack. I wanted to see a jam packed Bob's Burgers. I think closing the restaurant as part of the plot was a terrible move. Terrible. Um, putting the sinkhole and making it so no one could come into the restaurant. Now, maybe that was to keep it cheap so you wouldn't have as many characters and that was an excuse. If that's the case, then you really cheaped out on this movie and it shows. It shows. So I wanted to see I wanted to see uh, Marshmallow. Why not Marshmallow? He's a f fun character there. Uh, the drag queen that Bob's friends with and from an earlier episode. All these characters, you know, when the, when the restaurant's full of people, it's way more fun show. You know, making the kids work and doing that kind of stuff is always fun. I mean, again, I, I hate to badmouth the movie so much, but it was such a letdown for me. As a, as, a, as a guy who is such a fan of the show, I wanted to see this. I thought it would be great. It just doesn't live up to expectations. So the three-act breakdown, first act, um, the restaurant is in trouble again. Uh, Louise uh, is in trouble at school because her rep is damaged and then the sinkhole opens up and now they're really screwed uh, so uh, Louise gets the idea to go down in a hole to show what a badass she is she eventually does it and discovers a body act two it makes everything worse the body doesn't make her a badass. Uh, the restaurant, now there's almost no chance they're going to close up the hole until they tie up the murder. Um, fish odor gives them, gives them a half-ass answer. And understand, if you're going to do a continuity, you know, fish odor and the Belchers have been through a lot at this point. It would have been much better to introduce a newer bigger villain of some kind above fish odor and make fish odor their friend you know like have fish odor just oh the rents do oh you know what let's just forget it this month because that's something he'd do like he's just a, a flake really yes oh bob i just like you you know like you could see that happening and then it would be about something completely different um maybe they even team up but, um, and that would have been different, you know, from the show and then have this new entity. That was part of the Simpsons thing, right? You had a new entity, the U.S. government coming in and wrecking everything. So you could have another, like a bigger, I don't know, real estate guy or whatever coming in to destroy the town and buy the, the, the wharf. And then they have to team up with Fish Odor and the rest of the characters in the town to save the town. That would be a big story. So the murder is not that big. And then it's pretty obvious who committed the murder. It wasn't, it's not going to be Felix because they're not going to get rid of Felix as a character. So, oh, I saw a character I didn't recognize. Yeah, that's the murderer. The moment I saw, I think his name's Grover, uh, their, their, their lawyer, I said, oh yeah, that's, that's the guy who killed him. Uh, well, the moment I saw the body and then realized, oh, okay, it's a murder mystery. And then, then I said, oh yeah, Grover, he's the new guy. So it's got to be him. And then it was him, um, which again it doesn't matter. It's a comedy. I wanted to see more laughs. It, there just weren't enough laughs in it. You know, it's funny, but it's more amusing. I mean, the funniest moment in the movie is the car chase. I think where <laughs> Bob is driving through. There's a bunch of spare uh, horses for the merry-go-round, and Bob's just driving through them, trying to get away. And uh, Tina's just going, oh, God, oh, God, no. <laughs> it's like our worst nightmare. Um, and that was a good callback because even within the movie, they established the horse thing with Tina. But they kind of didn't do that with the rest of the movie. Even Bob being buried alive, he says it's his worst fear. But, you know, that's not really something I don't remember that being established on the show. Maybe it was. Uh, Gail, though. Linda's sister really missed in this. Um, I mean, you could have done a thing where they have to save the town, team up with Fish Odor. Maybe at the same time they're they're having a, a Belcher family reunion. You could have had all the... That's another character I forgot about. Bob's dad. 
uh, Linda's parents would love to see them all, right? So it's a it's a big family thing that they got to navigate along with saving the town. Like those would have been new to me. And you would have had all these characters in the restaurant and in their house. They're all staying there. They're all cramped together. But to save money on animation, I think they cut the characters. I think they said, no, 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 no. We only have the budget for this amount of people. You keep it there. And then this is what you get. This is the plot they came up with. So it's disappointing. Disappointing. Not bad. Just disappointing. You know, I think, again, for a free movie, for me, it was fine. I didn't regret watching it. I'd never watch it again. I'd watch the old episodes again before I'd watch this. But, you know, I think they just really sold the fans short on this one. Um, and it's a shame because it's a great concept, a great show. Uh, but as a movie, I mean, will they ever make another one again? It's a nice family movie, a nice family concept. But... You know, they've done more on the show, is what it boils down to. The shows are better. The movie, meh. It's exactly what that guy, guy said. It's about five episodes stitched together, but really with only one plot stretched out. Even the toilet episode, the talking toilet episode with Gene, was more intense and funnier than this episode. When they get trapped in the uh, uh, the warehouse, and the, the weird episode where there was like a... They were trapped in this factory, and then the Bob and Linda had to rescue the kids, and there's this dummy made out of taffy, and there's the rumor of gold, and at the end, uh, they, 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 the dummy ends up out on the beach, and as it washes away, the gold's inside the dummy. I mean, that was a great episode. This, not so great. And that's it for me, Tony D and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. For our more base takes, there's a Hollywood hot take and a news blast. We'll see you in the next one.